Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try to discuss them with the help of different questions. So before moving on to question number one, for all those who are watching this video for the very first time, you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon for all latest updates and notifications. You can also join our telegram group. In this very group, we share some free quizzes, the updates for all our videos and you can also post your queries over here. So let's not waste any time and move on to question number one. The question says, what does it refer to over here? So here we have two statements and we have to identify the concept which they are talking about. So let's read them one by one. The first one says it is a structured product which unlike bonds offer returns which are not fixed but market linked. And the second one says it can be categorized as principal protected and non-principal protected based on the risk profile. So what are they talking about? They are talking about a kind of a product which is like a bond like your debentures but it differs from the bond in a way that it doesn't offer you the fixed returns. If you are going in for investing in bonds you get fixed returns but if you invest in this product your returns will be linked to the market. So what do we call such products okay. The other name of such product is a structured product. So the structured product which are being talked about over here are the market linked debentures. So the answer to this question is option E market linked debentures. Let's study a bit about these products. So recently if we talk about the recent trends the debentures are not offering very good returns. But still, if you want to invest in over there and earn more, then there is an option for you all. There is another asset class wherein you can invest and earn good amount of returns. So that asset is the market linked debentures. There are different NBFCs which are offering you these instruments or these products. Your Pyramid Finance, Shiram Transport and many other NBFCs. So what are these market linked debentures? If you invest in over here, you get good amount of returns from ranging from 7 to 9 percent. Moreover, the, this uh, kind of a product is becoming quite uh, eye catchy for your wealthy investors. So this product wealthy investors ke liye kafi ek interesting product banta ja raha hai. Why do wealthy investors want to invest over here? If we, if we talk about the high net worth individuals or if we talk about your sophisticated investors, uh, they are preferring to invest in these market linked debentures. The amount minimum threshold is quite large. Moreover, these instruments offer you tax efficiency and many other such benefits. So let's study first that what are these debentures and then we'll move on to its benefits. So if I talk about the market linked debentures, as the name suggests, they are debentures which are linked to the markets. So they are more or less like your other debentures, your debts, your bonds or your loans. But unlike loans, you are not getting the Unlike those bonds, you are not getting the fixed returns. If you invest in any bond, in any simple bond, you earn some fixed amount of returns. Some bond may be offering you interest rate of say 8%, some might offer you 9%, 10%, 12% based on who is the company or the issuer who is issuing such bonds. But if I talk about the market linked debentures, also called as the structured products, they are nothing but bonds whose returns are market linked. So now let us understand how they are market linked. Here you will not get your regular coupon or interest payments. If you invest in bond, you will time to time interest or coupon amount. Milta but if you are investing in a market linked debenture, you, are, you will not be getting a regular coupon payment. In fact, once the time for which you have invested in these debentures, that time matures, then at the time of maturity, you will get back the principal amount which you have invested. And along with that, you will get some returns based on uh, the uh, securities or how the securities or the index is performing to, we, to which this, these debentures are linked. So, you in debentures, you invest in these market linked. You will be linked to security se linked or index. Se linked honge. And the way that security or index will perform, it will determine the interest or the returns which you are, you will go, you are going to earn. So, let us understand this with a simple example. This is the example which I have also mentioned in the slide. For example, you are investing in the market linked debentures which are linked to your Nifty. 
okay and the debenture says that if nifty move upward then some percent you will be earning on them as returns for example if the terms say that you are investing in a market linked debenture linked to nifty 50 and if that nifty increases if there is an upward trend then you will earn 75 percent of the amount as returns so if in actual your nifty rises suppose by 20 percent then 75 percent of that amount you will be earning in the form of returns so agar aapka jo debenture hai wo nifty se linked hai aur wo terms ye kehte hai ki agar nifty mein upward movement hogi to jitni bhi upward movement hogi uska 75 percent aapko mil jayega to agar 100 percent ki suppose movement ho gayi nifty mein to 75 percent aapko uska in the form of returns mil jayega this is how your market link debentures work so you are not going to earn anything before maturity aapko koi coupon payments nahi milengi but maturity ke time pe aapko principal amount bhi wapas mil jayega aur ek return bhi mil jayega and that return will depend on the way your security or index moves to which your market link debentures are actually linked up okay now let's move ahead further why would one like to invest in market linked debentures i told you that these debentures can be linked to your nifty suppose they are linked to your nifty then why will you prefer investing in these products and not going in to invest directly in the nifty stocks aap directly nifty mein kyon nahi invest karoge ya kisi aur instrument mein kyon na invest karke market linked debentures mein kyon invest karoge what is the reason of investing over here the answer to this question is the returns which you will get. Either you will get some positive returns or zero returns. But negative returns ka case yaha pe nahi arise hoga. So your investment is safe to that extent. Because I have already mentioned that these debentures will not pay you any coupon before maturity. And on maturity, the way the market performs, you will get the returns based on that. Rather than investing in these market debentures, if you will directly invest in gold or if you will directly invest in nifty or any other product, then if that product falls, if the market is U-turn and the product ki, us instrument ki value is reduced, then you will have to bear all the losses. If you have gold, mein invest kiya, suppose 50,000 and its value is reduced, if 45,000 or if you have invested product mein invest kiya, jiski value 45,000 or value is reduced, Okay, especially shares mein to kaafi zyada fluctuations hota rehta hai. If you, uh, agar uski value itni kam ho gai, to you have to bear that negative returns part. But in market linked debentures, either you will have some returns. Ab maine kaha ki nifty agar itna move upward karegi, to aapko 75% milega. Agar wo upward move nahi karegi, then aapko wo return nahi milega. Aapko koi loss to nahi hoga na. To wo loss se aap bach jate ho. If you are investing in market linked debentures, Upside returns are yours, but the negative returns you don't have to bear. But if you directly invest in Nifty, any other stock or any other asset, the downside is something which you have to bear. If returns are negative, you have to bear that. You have to bear that. market link debentures. Mein nahi karne Secondly, these debentures complement your other investments. So this is a very good option wherein you can invest. It's not an alternative to your other investments. Rather, it will work as a parallel and it will be a instrument with instruments ke to invest. Thirdly, taxation. If you are holding these debentures, okay, then the tax benefits are quite large. Because if you invest normal bonds, mein invest ke, if you are going in for investing in simple vanilla bonds, vanilla bonds are the basic bonds, the simplest bonds. If you are investing in there, then based on the tax uh, slab rate you are falling in, you have tax dena padega. If your income is tax tax, say 30% rate, then you have to pay those taxes on these bonds. And other than that, some other taxes get added and around 42% uh, tax you need to pay on the vanilla bonds but if i talk about the market linked debentures around 14 15 percent tax comes up okay so that benefit is there because they are taxed according to the capital gains taxation so aapko tax itna zyada pay nahi karna padta hai that is why this these kinds of products are quite preferred by your wealthy investors if i talk about the types okay on the basis of risk profile, then we have principal protected and non principal protected products. Usually, uh, we invest in your market linked debentures which are principal protected. Subs are the popular principal protected debentures. 
बिकॉज देयर इज अ गारंटी दैट यू विल गेट बैक योर प्रिंसिपल अमाउंट ओके सो दे आर मोर ऑफ योर डेट लाइक कि आपको उतना पैसा तो वापस में नहीं जाएगा बट इफ आई टॉक अबाउट नॉन प्रिंसिपल प्रोटेक्टेड देन दे ऑफर यू सम फिक्स मिनिमम रिटर्न कि पाँच छः परसेंट मिल जाएगा बट दी मार्केट बट देन देर इज अ मार्केट अपसाइड बाकी का आपका डिपेंड करेगा कि मार्केट कैसे परफॉर्म कर रही है सो देर इज सम एलिमेंट ऑफ रिस्क विद डैट रिगार्ड दैट इज वाई प्रिंसिपल प्रोटेक्टेड प्रोडक्ट्स आर प्रेफर्ड मोर देन इफ आई टॉक अबाउट द थ्रेश होल्ड ऑफ इन्वेस्टिंग I have already told you that the high net worth individuals, sophisticated investors, invest here. Why? But because the amount of investment is quite large. Twenty-five lakhs is the minimum amount which needs to be invested here. Now, lastly, if I talk about the risks associated, then the first risk is the market risk. I have already told you that their returns are dependent on the market. So, are you satisfied with the return this product is offering you? If yes, then you can invest. If no, then you should find some other product. Secondly, there is credit risk. Now, you are issuing the debentures. Okay, whosoever is the issuer, uh, the issuer may default. Okay, he may might not be able to pay you back. So, the ability to pay is very important factor which you need to consider before investing. आप जिनके भी जिस भी कंपनी के debentures ले रहे हो, उनके different पैरामीटर्स को असेस करो यू नीड टू असेस हाउ दे आर परफॉर्मिंग फाइनेंशियली वॉट आर वॉट हैव बीन देयर फाइनेंशियल पोजिशन देयर अकाउंटिंग रेशियोज एंड अकॉर्डिंगली यू शुड इन्वेस्ट इन ओवर देयर इफ यू थिंक दैट दिस इशूअर विल पे यू बैक फॉर श्योर सो दिस वॉज ऑल अबाउट योर मार्केट लिंक डिवेंचर्स वी हैव ऑलरेडी आंसर द क्वेश्चन द आंसर वॉज ऑप्शन ई सो नाउ लेट्स मूव ऑन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर टू The question says that SEBI has recently notified some rules for your listed entities. Why? It has been done with the aim of strengthening the corporate governance practices. So you have to identify the statements which correctly states these rules which SEBI has recently notified. So let's first have a look at the rules and then we will read back these statements. So, if I talk about SEBI, SEBI has recently come up with rules in order to enhance the corporate governance practices. Recently, RBI also came with the corporate governance practices. We already discussed all those go corporate governance practices in one of the previous sessions. So, here also SEBI is uh, coming up with certain rules so that it can enhance the governance of these listed entities, make sure that they are better governed, better managed. so what are the rules which sebi has notified so if i talk very briefly just if i just mention these uh, rules then the first one is that the top 1000 listed entities will have to formulate the dividend distribution policy second one says that the listed entities need to make the formulate the risk management committee and make sure that they function properly thirdly whatever video audio recordings are there of the meetings of the analysts or the meetings of the investors all the, the them should be there on the website and the necessary details about such recording such meetings should be provided to the stock exchanges timely then we have another guideline which is with respect to the business responsibility and sustainability report where the listed entities need to timely make the disclosure of this report so this report mentions what the organization is doing or how is it functioning with respect to the parameters like uh, with respect to what they are doing for the environment how they are handling the governance what they are doing for the society so these four broad areas have been focused by sebi recently to strengthen the corporate governance so if i talk about these rules the first one is with respect to the dividend distribution policy so if i talk about this dividend distribution policy earlier it was mandatory for top 500 listed entities to have this policy but now it has been extended to top 1000 listed entities on the basis of market capitalization सो मार्केट कैपिटलाइजेशन के बेसिस पे जो टॉप थाउजेंड लिस्टेड एंटिटीज हैं उन्हें डिविडेंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन पॉलिसी फॉर्मुलेट करनी होगी सो वॉट इज दिस मार्केट कैपिटलाइजेशन वेन वट एवर करेंट शेयर प्राइज इज प्रिवेलिंग वेन यू मल्टीप्लाई दैट विद दी शेयर आउटस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द कंपनी यू गेट दी मार्केट कैपिटलाइजेशन सो मार्केट कैपिटलाइज ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ मार्केट कैपिटलाइजेशन द टॉप थाउजेंड एंटिटीज नीड टू फॉर्मुलेट दी डिविडेंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन पॉलिसी 
it's not that they just have to formulate this policy but they also require to disclose this policy on their websites and the what policy is the firm following that or the link to that needs to provide be provided in the annual reports as well pehle ye 500 top 500 entities ke liye tha ab ise 1000 entities ke liye extend kar diya gaya hai whatever dividend distribution policy is there that is how much dividends you are earn, you are basically retaining what amount of dividends you are giving what policy you are following that needs to be disclosed by these 1000 listed entities <coughs> the second one says to address the information asymmetry among shareholders sebi has asked the listed firms to make audio visual recordings available on the website taki shareholders tak sari information pahunche whatever information is there that should reach the shareholders with that objective the sebi has asked the listed firms that whatever communication they are having with the analysts the investors in the meetings the information about that needs to be disclosed on the website the audio video recordings all those need to be up, uh, uploaded on the website as well as the information about that needs to be provided to the stock exchanges earlier uh, if you talk about this uh, very thing the disclosure requirement this is voluntary till april 2021 to abhi tak ye voluntarily tha, karna tha but from april Uh, April 2021 से ये voluntary है but April 2022 से ये mandatory हो जाएगा it will become mandatory for the firms to make this disclosure then I have already mentioned you about your business sustainability responsibility and sustainability report so the thousand listed entities top thousand listed entities they need to make disclosure about this report all right so these are the guidelines and then if I talk about the risk management committee thing so the sebi has asked again top 1000 entities the other the previously it was 500 now it has been extended to 1000 entities that they need to make this risk management committee so this committee should comprise of minimum of 3 members and majority of them should be the board of directors and there should be at least one independent director the importance of independence independent directors i have already discussed in the session where i covered the corporate governance rules which have been formulated by RBI so you can watch that session if you haven't then if i talk about the meetings the meeting of rmc should be held and the quorum is either two members or one third members whichever is higher and at least one member should be the board of director also further the meetings should be held and the gap between two meetings should not be more than 180 days okay Finally if I talk about the role of risk management committee then the committee needs to formulate the risk management policy it needs to monitor the implementation of that policy time to time review of, of that policy is needed then there is an if some kind of a chief risk officer needs to be appointed then that the task of appointing that person remunerating him removing him keeping a check on his performance monitoring his performance is again the role of the risk management committee so these were few rules which uh, sebi has recently come up with in order to enhance the corporate governance of these entities so the question talks about the statements which correctly states these rules so the first one says that sebi has notified rules including that top 500 listed firms have to formulate dividend distribution policy this is wrong because it was for top 1000 top 500 ka to pehle hi tha then we have sebi has put in place a framework with respect to applicability constitution role of risk management committee this is correct third one says that sebi disclosure requirements under the business responsibility and sustainability reporting will be applicable to top 500 companies no top 1000 listed entities based on market cap so only second statement is correct answer is option b now let's move on to our question number 3 So the question says that Enroute Technologies is a card-based customer-centric payment company aiming to solve the problems of underserved segments of society with reliable payment solutions integrated with consumer platform using innovative technologies. So it is just an information about the company added over here to make this question a case-based question. Okay. So the part of the question which will help us answer this question is this, which I am going to read now. 
RBI has recently granted the authorization to Enroot Technologies to operate as the prepaid payment instruments company. What? As a prepaid payment instruments company. Some other companies already working as PPIs include your HDFC Bank, PaysApp, State Banks, YONO, which are approved by Central Bank and the non-bank PPIs like Paytm, GPay, which are authorized by RBI to purchase goods, services, including financial service, transfer money, etc. You have to identify the type of PPI discussed in the above case. So here they are discussing the concept of prepaid payment instruments and you have to identify the type of pay prepaid payment instrument which in root technology is allowed now to operate as. Okay, other than that, जो ये आपके पेटीएम है जी पे है पेज ऐप है योनो है ये सब किस टाइप ऑफ पीपीआई के एग्जाम्पल है सो लेट्स फर्स्ट डिस्कस अबाउट पीपीआई देन वील आंसर दिस क्वेश्चन सो रिसेंटली आर बी आई ऑन इट्स वेबसाइट नोटिफाइड दैट इन रूट टेक्नोलॉजीज कैन ऑल्सो ऑपरेट एज अ पी पी आई एंड इट कैन कमेंस इट्स ऑपरेशन एज अ सेमी क्लोज पी पी आई एज वॉट एज अ सेमी क्लोज प्रीपेड इंस्ट्रूमेंट नाउ बिकॉज इन रूट technology has been allowed to function as ppi it can help serve a wide variety of customers with the user friendly payment options payment solutions so what is this ppi is the very first question and we must be aware about this concept so if i talk about ppis as the name suggests they are the prepaid payment instruments they are the instruments where you are already have the amount and you can use that amount to make the payments for example if you want to make a purchase you can pay using your e wallets okay you can make purchases using your debit card credit card paytm gpa so what are all these all these are prepaid payment instruments in instruments mein already paise hote hain ya ye aapke bank accounts se linked hote hain aur aap inhe पेमेंट के लिए यूज कर सकते हो दैट्स वाई दे आर प्री पेड पेमेंट इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स सो यूजिंग दिस इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स यू कैन परचेज योर गुड सर्विसेज यू कैन अवेल डिफरेंट फाइनेंशियल सर्विस यू कैन ट्रांसफर द फंड्स इफ यू आर सिटिंग ओवर हेयर एंड यू नीड टू ट्रांसफर मनी टू सम यू सपोज यू आर इन से यू आर इन डेली एंड योर पेरेंट्स आर समेर से लखनऊ एंड यू नीड you need to transfer money you can use these instruments to transfer money or if you are going to a shopping mall and you need to make a purchase okay you can make the payments using these instruments so they help in making payments okay now there are three different types of your ppis closed semi closed and open ppis agar main aapke semi closed ppis ki baat karu to paytm and gpay are the examples if i talk about closed ppis then your gift cards your metro cards your coupons they are your example and open ppis include your debit card credit card so let us read about them or un try to understand about these different types in a bit detail if i talk about your closed ppis okay closed ppi system is a system where the ppi that is issued is only valid when used against purchases from the entity with which issues it okay these instruments cannot be used for payment to some third party so what do they mean by this if you are take if you are getting some ppi issued okay jo entity usko issue kar rahi hai aap wahi usko payment ke liye use kar sakte ho kisi aur third party seller कि हाँ पेमेंट करने के लिए आप उसे यूज नहीं कर सकते लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड दिस विद एन एग्जांपल। एग्जांपल इंक्लूड योर गिफ्ट वाउचर्स योर कूपन योर स्मार्ट कार्ड विच यू यूज एट मेट्रो रेलवे एक्सेट्रा सो अगर आपने दिल्ली मेट्रो में ट्रैवल किया होगा इफ यू हैव यूज दिल्ली मेट्रो सर्विसेज दे इशू यू अट्रो कार्ड यू कैन यूज दैट कार्ड ओनली टू मेक द पेमेंट एट दी मेट्रो स्टेशन आपको कहीं से कहीं ट्रैवल करना है मेट्रो में तो आप वो कार्ड को स्वैप करके या उसको वहाँ पे मशीन पे टच करके पेमेंट कर सकते हो ना दैट मेट्रो कार्ड कैन नॉट बी यूज एल्सवेयर आप वो मेट्रो कार्ड मॉल में ले जाके यू कि बाइंग से फुटवेयर आप उसको पेमेंट के लिए नहीं यूज कर सकते द एंटिटी विच आर इशूड इज इट दैट इज योर डेली मेट्रो दैट कैन दैट कार्ड कैन ओनली बी यूज टू अवेल इट्स सर्विसेज आप उसको कहीं और यूज नहीं कर सकते टू पे सम थर्ड पार्टी That is why it's a closed system because आप उसे उसी जगह यूज कर सकते हो कहीं और नहीं यू कैनॉट विदड्रॉ कैश यूजिंग दोज कार्ड ओके नाउ 
because they are your they are not your payment instruments rather different entities are issuing it so rbi has nothing to do with it you don't need the rbi approval in that case okay. and then if i talk about the semi closed so they are semi closed here you have your banks which are approved by rbi then some non bank entities which are approved by rbi and they are issuing you these instruments uh, you can use them for making the payments for transferring money like your google pay or paytm ye sab non bank entities hai lekin inke paas rbi ka approval hai these entities have rbi approval that they can offer you the ppis then if i talk about certain banks hdfc bank is offering you pays app state bank is offering you yono app so you can use them for making the payments for transferring the money so these are semi closed ppis you can use it at a group of clearly clearly identified merchant locations or any establishment which have a specific contract with uh, with these locations to accept the ppi so jahan jahan pe approval hai ki ye ppis wahan pe use ho sakte hain payment ke liye for example uh, if someone has been authorized ki ha aap paytm use kar sakte ho to accept जी पे यूज कर सकते हो इवन स्मॉल ऑटो ट्रेड ऑटो पीपल द पीपल हु आर प्रोवाइडिंग एस दी ऑटो सर्विसेज और बेसिक ग्रॉसरी सर्विसेज दे हैव ऑल्सो प्रोवाइड द नेसेसरी डॉक्यूमेंटेशन एंड हैव बीन अप्रूव टू एक्सेप्ट मनी थ्रू दीज प्लेटफॉर्म्स सो दे आर योर एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ सेमी क्लोज पी पी आईज ओके हेयर ऑल्सो यू आर नॉट अलाउड टू विदड्रॉ द कैश बट नाउ आर बी आई हेज मेड सर्टन अमेंडमेंट विच आई डिस्कस but before that what's an open system ppi open system ppis are issued by your banks only which are approved by rbi and you can use it at any merchant to purchase the goods to avail the services and you can also use these ppis to withdraw the cash at your atms sabse common example is ka hai debit card credit card you can easily use them for making payments you can take the debit card and withdraw money out of the atms so this is an open system all right now earlier only with respect to open system you were allowed to withdraw cash but now rbi has made certain amendments in one of the sessions which i covered previously i talked about what rbi has done with respect to the uh, different with respect to these uh, payment systems okay when we discussed about the rbi's amendments uh, we talked that the ppis have been allowed to deal with rbi and operate uh, as a centralized payment system helping out in the rtgs and neft so rtgs or neft bhi in ppis ko allow kar di gayi hai other than that the amount which we can have in this instrument the limit was increased to 2 lakh and then the cash withdrawals were also permitted ki aap in instruments ke through apne wallets ke through apne prepaid cards ke through atm se bhi money withdraw kar sakoge why all these steps were taken by rbi it was done because it was going to help in the financial inclusion so full kyc ppis like wallets and prepaid cards were made interoperable and the outstanding balance was increased to 2 lakh so these were the rbi amendments in this regard So the answer to this question is option C, semi-closed PPI. Now moving on to last question, it says that the government of India, that the government of India, in consultation with RBI, has decided to issue what? To issue the sovereign gold bonds. Sovereign gold bonds will be issued in six tranches from May to September. Which of the following statement correctly states the benefits of these bonds? So let's study a bit about these bonds first. If you have uh, recently visited the RBI website, you would have observed that there is a notification that says that the government is issuing the sovereign gold bonds in six tranches, and the amount which has been specified, the issue price of this bond will be four triple seven rupees per gram. these bonds will be issued on behalf of government by rbi and if you are basically buying these bonds using the online platforms making online payment then you all you will also get a 50 rupee discount per gram of gold these bonds are going to be issued for 8 years and if you want to exit from them then after 5 year also there is an exit option but the question arises what 
आर दी सॉवरन गोल्ड बॉन्ड्स वी आर सेइंग दैट द आरबीआई इज इशूइंग देम बट ये होते क्या हैं सो लेट स्टडी अ बिट अबाउट देम सॉवरन गोल्ड बॉन्ड्स आर दी गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज डिनोमिनेटेड इन टर्म्स ऑफ गोल्ड सो ये गवर्नमेंट की सिक्योरिटीज हैं जो गोल्ड को रिप्रेजेंट करती हैं यू डोंट नीड टू बाय फिजिकल गोल्ड यू कैन बाय दीज सिक्योरिटीज एंड दे आर लिंक्ड टू योर गोल्ड ओनली सो इट विल दे आर द सब्सटीट्यूट्स ऑफ होल्डिंग फिजिकल गोल्ड बॉन्ड्स इशूड बाय आर बी आई यू कैन पे द इशू प्राइस एंड द बॉन्ड्स विल बी रिटीम्ड ऑन मेच्योरिटी सो ये सिक्योरिटीज हैं जो आपका गोल्ड रिप्रेजेंट करती हैं इफ यू आर बाइंग दी सिक्योरिटीज दैट मीन्स यू हैव गोल्ड बट नॉट इन अ फिजिकल फॉर्म Now, what are the benefits of sovereign gold bond? Firstly, you will get attractive interest rate on them. Okay, around two point five to some percent of the return you get in the form of interest. And not only that return, but there is also a chance of asset appreciation. Asset appreciation opportunities there. आप जैसे gold में invest करते हो, gold का price बढ़ जाएगा तो आपको benefit मिलेगा. Similarly, with this is with the sovereign gold bond, you are buying these bonds. If the prices will rise of the gold, these bond prices will rise, and you will earn more later on when you mature these bonds, and you will also earn some interest rate. So one benefit is that. Secondly, the quantity of gold for which the investor pays is protected since he receives ongoing market price at redemption. Usually, the gold is not that very volatile. Okay, वो ज़्यादा fluctuation से impact नहीं होता. It is more of a, a stable kind of an instrument. So, at maturity, whatever price is prevailing, you will get that, and there is higher chances of getting the appreciated amount. So, with that regard, your amount is protected. Thirdly, these bonds offer superior alternative to holding gold in physical form. If you are holding gold in physical form, आपको उन्हें कहीं पे locker में save करके रखना पड़ेगा. You need to keep them safe. So that with respect to the storage, with you have to incur cost, and there are risks that that gold might get stolen. So that those problems will not be there in if you buy a sovereign gold bond. आपको उसको locker में रखने की जरूरत नहीं है. Locker के पे के लिए आपको पे करने की जरूरत नहीं है आपको रिस्क नहीं होगी कि कोई गोल्ड आपका चोरी करके ले जाएगा सो दैट सेफ्टी इज देयर देन द इन्वेस्टर्स आर आल्सो अश्योर्ड ऑफ मार्केट वैल्यू ऑफ गोल्ड एट टाइम ऑफ मेच्योरिटी एंड पेरियोडिकल इंटरेस्ट वी ऑलरेडी डिस्कस कि आपको इंटरेस्ट मिल जाएगा और जो भी मार्केट वैल्यू प्रिवेल कर रही होगी वो भी मिलेगी साथ साथ देन वी हैव दीज बॉन्ड्स आर फ्री फ्रॉम इशूज लाइक मेकिंग चार्जेस प्योरिटी इन केस ऑफ गोल्ड ज्वेलरी सो इफ यू आर बाइंग physical gold say in the form of jewelry you need to make the payment of the jewelry charges also aap koi apni jewelry bana banwa rahe ho aur khareed rahe ho gold jewelry ke form mein to wo jewelry banane ke alag paise rakhte hain the money for gold is there but jewelry making charges are also to be paid then there is high risk that from where you are buying gold is that pure or not so those problems will not arise if you buy the gold bonds then they also offer you the benefit of exemption of taxes if you hold them till maturity agar aap ise 8 years tak rakhoge if you are buying a sovereign gold bonds uh, and you are holding them for 8 years if you are buying them from a primary market then you are tax you are you will not be taxed on that okay they are tax free so this is a picture which recently came up in one of the newspapers uh, so if you are going for physical gold digital gold exchange gold exchange trade fund you need to pay the tax as per your income slab but if you are buying the sovereign gold for bond from your primary market and holding them for 8 years then they are tax free so this was about the sovereign gold bond now gold comes in varied of stars to add shine to your portfolio uh, it's not that you can just buy physical gold or sovereign gold bond we have other options also like you can buy the digital gold you can buy the uh, gold exchange traded funds so let us understand a bit about these If I go for physical gold, okay, you will get the physical possession. आपके पास gold का possession होगा, jewelry होगी, biscuits होंगे, gold coins होंगे. So gold is a tangible asset. So you, if you are buying physical gold, you will have the possession. Okay, and uh, the gold buying gold is quite suggested by different experts. कि आपको gold रखना चाहिए अपने portfolio में because it acts as a hedging instrument. Along with other instruments, it can be it is more stable so it can offer you better returns so aapka portfolio ko aur diversify karega 
and then gold is univer universally accepted in case of emergency you can sell gold and get payments aapko gold ke badle loan mil jayega you can easily get loans against gold as it is a universally accepted instrument then taxation we have already discussed that uh, uh, with respect to sovereign gold bonds after 8 years you don't have to pay tax but if it is physical gold then you have to pay the tax as per your income tax slab rates agar aap us gold ko 3 years se kam tak held kar rahe ho but if you are holding gold for more than 3 years then 20% tax rate but the downside with respect to physical gold is the storage cost then the risk that it might get stolen then the jewelry charges jewelry making charges so that's the problem with physical gold then we have digital gold so like we use our wallets now we can use those wallets to purchase digital gold also they are also your non physical form of gold so to make physical gold attractive investment apps are there wallets are there which offer you digital gold so aap isme as do as 1 rupee tak ka gold khareed sakte ho Uh, buyers can ask for delivery of physical gold if they have at least one gram of precious metal. So you can buy and sell using the apps which are there for buying and selling of gold. And if the amount of gold accumulates to one gram, you can also ask for physical gold. If you want to sell that gold which you have in your wallet, you can use that the investment app which deals in gold. Okay. So the advantage here is again it's a digital gold, so no storage charges. but if you are uh, getting the physical gold then you have to obviously bear the storage charges so the area is not very well regulated as your uh, sovereign gold bonds are regulated kyunki rbi wo ne issue kar raha hai wo better regulated honge exchange traded funds are traded so they are also regulated but your digital gold is not that much regulated you are forced to go through same app or platform if you want to sell or if you want to buy and then if you are taking the physical delivery you will have to pay the making charges so these are some cons talking about the gold exchange traded funds we already discussed about exchange traded funds in the passive investing session where these are your basket of assets which are traded on the exchange so when these funds are linked to gold they are gold traded exchange so they are again paper gold and here these funds are pegged to your gold 24 karat gold and the underlying asset is gold and some cash if you want to invest in this then you need to open a dmat account so ye exchange pe traded hote hain isliye aapko is pe expenses bhi incur karne padte hain and when you will redeem them you will get the monetary value of the price of gold that prevails on that day of redemption so here you have to bear the expenses you have to open a dmat account so uske respect mein bhi cost hongi plus point is that there is no storage cost because it's the paper gold and uh, there is liquidity also aap use buy sell easily kar sakte ho exchange mein but the expense ratio the dmat account maintenance charges they are to be paid so costly to hai this was about your different ways of investing in gold if i move back to the question we have to identify the benefits of these bonds So first is that they offer superior alternative to holding gold in physical form because the risks and the cost of store storage are eliminated. Yes, this is a benefit. Second one says investors are assured of market value of gold at time of maturity and periodical interest. Yes, this is also a benefit of sovereign gold bond. Third is they are free from issues like making charges, purity of gold. Yes, obviously this is the main reason. And lastly, it offers the benefit of exemption from capital gains tax if held till maturity yes okay so 8 years tak agar aap rakhoge to aapko capital gains tax ki exemption hai all these are benefits so the answer is all the statements are correct option e this was all for today's session i hope you found this session to be useful with this i would like to end up this session thank you so much